Hey, what's up everybody? So today I'm going to show you uh, how to make a smart cat toy with Arduino and servos. You can see my cat here playing with it. It was a really easy project and check out the link in my comments or in my description section of the video uh, for more information because there's a detailed guide on how to set it all up. <clears throat> Let me just go over a couple of the parts. So you have the Arduino Uno here. It's just a standard Arduino board and it's got all these different uh, connectors and pins to connect to the servos and what you're going to want is you're going to want wires and if you get the right kit it'll come with them servos which comes with the pan tilt accessory or the robot arm that i included in the link um, you can see over here i actually started with a robot arm and i changed my mind and decided to make a cat toy this is a breadboard that's for merging you know actually uh, joining up wires together. Uh, you can also use like an Arduino hat and actually goes on top of the Arduino. This is if you um, eventually want to uh, make this project permanent. Um, you can connect the circuits together on the top of the board here and pretty much what it is is um, you take like a soldering iron and you solder uh, the wires together in circuit. Uh, you can see where I'm pointing at right there. Uh, I'm actually just showing off basically they're essentially similar except for a breadboard's more for drafting and there's the solder right there. So what also you need is a, a resistor for the laser. It actually uh, dims the laser so it doesn't produce so much power and ends up blinding you or your cat and it was recommended in the article I got the inspiration from. And then this is just a little USB um, plug-in outlet and it's 5 volt. You want to be careful when you buy those or if you use them and make sure um, they don't have too high of a rating for the Arduino. Um, and then you can see here on my finished build, there's the little breadboard over to the left and it's just the same thing as a larger breadboard but it's smaller. And I'm basically just using it to couple and bind together the power and the ground for the servos. There's a servo on the bottom and then a servo on the left side to make it turn left and right and up and down. And if you get a kit that has those, you don't need to buy them separate. And then the last thing you need is that laser. That laser basically has just a wire that's going to the ground and then another wire that's going to pin 13 on the uh, actual board. And then in the breadboard there, I've got a little resistor in between the wire that goes to the board and the wire that goes to the laser. So ultimately, you don't even need a breadboard either. Um, I've got two schematic diagrams in the link on the guide to show you how to do it with or without a breadboard. but pretty much in a nutshell it's just a few parts it's really just an Arduino kit that has all the wires and the resistors and the cable and then basically just a pan tilt accessory or a robot arm and then uh, the laser and that's really all you need and if you go and check out the article you can see I've got it all laid out with all the different parts you need and then options in case you're on a budget and you want to only spend about $30 uh, versus if you don't mind spending an extra, you know, 20 or $30 to get, uh, you know, a better or more thorough kit or accessories or if you want to do the robot arm. And then in the guide, I show all the different steps of where you have to actually wire everything together. And then you have to take the code and you have to actually download the drivers and the Arduino IDE, which is just an interface to inject the code into the Arduino board. You can see it right there. That's the first uh, diagram where it shows using this uh, setup without a breadboard. And then I made one down here to show you how to um, wire it all together with a breadboard. It's pretty simple. Uh, you just literally get all the parts, you wire it up, and then you go and you download the software, whether you have a Mac, Windows, or uh, Linux operating system. And then you're going to use the web editor, or um, if there's another Arduino IDE you prefer to use, doesn't matter really. And then you basically just plug it into your computer and you're going to go into the Arduino IDE and you copy the code from the article and then you're going to go ahead and paste it in and <clears throat> pretty much you're just inserting the code into the actual board to where it actually can respond and do the things that you want it to do. Turn left, right, up, down, and then it's got a couple of delays in between to kind of, you know, randomize for your cat. but. It's very simple. It would only take probably about 20 or 30 minutes if you're using the pan tilt accessory and you're a beginner. It's not very hard. Uh, the hardest part is probably just downloading this software and the drivers and just uploading it onto the board, which it's not difficult at all. Okay. You can see the code down here in the red. I've actually uh, closed this in code tags so you can actually tell the difference between the code and the article itself. That's what you're going to copy. Um, there's also a link in here as well too to the code if you want to uh, copy it from a different location if you don't want to copy it from here and 
let's say you're on your desktop or something, but you're basically going to go to New Sketch up on the top left <clears throat> of the Arduino editor. And you can see it up there in the actual interface. When you click on New Sketch, you're going to just insert that code just like I am right now. I just actually removed old code and I inserted the new code. And then you hit that little check mark to check it. And then what you're going to do is hit that arrow to upload it to the Arduino board. Now, if it's having problems recognizing the Arduino board to the right of that arrow, it won't recognize it. It won't show an Arduino preloaded. Okay, so that might be a driver issue. But other than that, it's as simple as that. Once you do it, you're going to notice some lights flash off on the actual Arduino board. Over in the top right, you can see it here. I've got a live uh, webcam going at the same time. And basically, once you're done uploading it, you're going to see it start moving around. Um, if it's not moving around, or if it kind of is and kind of isn't, it might be something to do with your breadboard connection. It might be not strong enough, or there might be a couple of loose wires, so make sure to check on that. Um, but other than that, it's pretty simple to set it all up. So you can grab the code here from the article, or you can click on the link that I've got also in the article to go get the um, code from GitHub, or if you want to download it, you just click the download button up at the top of the actual repository. <clears throat> You can also click the raw button up there in the top right of the window right now and it'll just basically output text where you can copy and paste it. So when we look at the schematic here, what's going on is you got pin 13. It's just basically like data. It's transferring data over to that laser um, and it's got the resistor in between. This is basically if you are uh, going to use the breadboard, you can actually wire it on the same circuit of the breadboard like I did. Um, but right now I'm just showing you, you can see how I've got all the power on the same circuit and then the ground on the same circuit. Those ground wires are going from the Arduino board to the actual breadboard and then the other two ground wires are going to the servos. And then the same thing with the power, the power is coming from the 5 volt pin over to the breadboard and then on the same circuit I've got the two red wires that are going to the servos and then those yellow wires, those are the data wires, you see one going to pin number 9 and then you see another one going to pin number six, okay? And then you take the last data wire, um, it's going from pin number 13 to the laser, okay? And really, that's that's all you have to do. You just hook it all up, you grab this code, you insert it, and then you upload it, and then you should be good to go. If you need to change the amount of range that this thing has, if it's not working for where it's at, if you have it up on a wall or a roof or something like that, you can actually adjust the, the min x, the max x, the min y, and the max y. That's the range of motion on the x-axis and the y-axis for these servos. And then below it, the min freeze and max freeze, that's just the millisecond like delay that's in between the movement. Okay, and so basically you can actually adjust it if you have to, and I had to because I had it on the wall instead of like just on a table. So it could actually appropriately, you know, uh, position itself around my living room because at first it was, it was Basically, the laser was flashing all over the bookshelf and the other wall, and um, it wasn't hitting the floor directly in my living room, and so I had to adjust these settings. And so if you do need to make any adjustments, you can do that. Um, however, you, I'm sure you can find a position to put this thing to where it's not giving you uh, problems, you know. You can see here it is up on the wall after I uploaded it. I just unplugged it, and I have a longer cable that goes into the power outlet that I showed you earlier. Um, and then basically <laughs> I've got it taped up on my wall because I just finished it not that long ago. Um, but my cat, she's been playing with it for hours and you can see she's already kind of given up here because she's pooped out. So, uh, it definitely works. It's really cool. And you can hook up a smart switch to it if you want to and have it turn on certain times of the day or off certain times with Alexa. It just depends on what you want to do. Um, there's some other things in here I have too, is some alternative or um, secondary power supplies. One with a 9 volt battery is the top one here, and then another one down on the bottom is the DC plug-in adapter, and it goes into that little plug-in hole. You can see I'm pointing at it up at the top right there. Um, and basically, you'll find other places online where people say if you have more than one servo motor, you need to have another power supply, um, which I have not needed to use one yet um, with this cat toy. Um, it hasn't short-circuited anything, but just something to you know think about and keep in mind and then down here I've got breadboards and these are not required they're just optionals I put them in there because it's what I had I also have a mounting like a circuit board holder it just makes it easier to work with and not fumble around with wires and so I just have that as a recommendation just because it's easier to work with it you can see up there in the top right I'm, I'm showing off my uh, my mount my holder and these are just things that might help you. And if you do continue to play with Arduino in the future, they're nice to have. And so 
Um, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. I've got all the parts, all the actual uh, things you need. I might make it a little easier and make a link to where it just shows you exactly what you need. Um, if you have any issues, just let me know uh, in the comments. Now, you'll notice there's a link also in there of the inspiration of where I got this idea from. So this guy used a pan tilt sensor and it's really cool. You see it right there. They come pre-assembled and there's one for $10 and one for $20. It will make your build time shorten by at least half because the robot arm took me forever. I had to go find a PDF guide online. And so that's just a recommendation, a little pro tip because if you want to just have it really ready and set to go to where you can set it up within an hour, then pan tilt accessory would be great. But that's it. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section. Make sure to check out, check out my site, www.thesmarthomeninja.com. Subscribe um, to the newsletter or you know register if you want. I'll be showing other builds in the future. But other than that, if you have any questions, just let me know. And I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I hope this helps you uh, build your first Arduino project. Thanks for watching.